<sighs> so, I guess um, I could also make videos on failed projects. Uh, there's this one project that has eluded me for about two weeks now. Um, makes me really, really, really sad. Um, someone actually said they were surprised that I don't get sad when my projects don't work. Um, that's not true. I actually get really, really, really sad. Um, so this project is not cubing related. It's uh, spinner related. And you've probably seen these things everywhere. They really blew up and uh, we're selling them at um, the, the place I work. Uh, shout out to my boss, uh, cubicle.us, um, puzzlers and speeders worldwide. Um, so uh, yeah, we sell spinners and I was like, some guy on Facebook, uh, Michal, I was like, you should make a magnetic spinner. Cause I was just joking. I was like, I'm gonna be a pro spinner now. But then it just, it, after I heard the thought, it was like inception. I had to pursue it with like all my thinking and like I've been thinking about it for so long. And I read up on magnetic bearings, things like that. And in theory, it was such a brilliant idea, but I just couldn't get it to work out. So uh, the first try was this, um, really strong ring magnets. Um, but the problem with that is um, the middle would like misalign and it would like, it wasn't nice, it would bump against the spindle. Um, and the theory behind this one was, um, if we use physics to design one, um, so if we remove bearing ten friction, bearing friction, then all that's left is air, f air resistance. And as you learn in physics one um, in college, uh, air resistance is based on frontal area, form drag, and turbulence. Um, the most ideal uh, shapes for uh, aerodynamics is the like the dewdrop and the aerofoil and the rule of thumb when it comes to aerofoils is uh, eight times the width um, eight times longer than the frontal area um, another interesting thing is uh, frontal area is the biggest um, source of drag and air resistance so um, I think it's a squared function um, basically that just means for the best Eric dynamic form, you want to keep the front of it as small as possible and uh, make it so that the air comes together smoothly. That's why airplane wings are shaped aerodynamically and things like that. So I tried doing an aerofoil shape, um, but the problem was in the magnet. So I thought about it. I could use uh, cones and other things, and that might work, but the cone got sucked up into the middle of the, the ring magnet, so that didn't work either. And uh, just today I printed some more things. Uh, this is uh, um, another uh, spinner, but I thought to myself, what if we put, put a ball bearing inside here and the magnet just levitates the top whole thing? And the rationale behind that is, uh, um, the rationale was, uh, so the coefficient of friction, um, as you'll remember from physics, is also based on the amount of force that's applied downwards. So in physics, you have to calculate um, the coefficient of friction for like, um, you're moving a 10 kilogram weight on this surface, so what's the friction? Um, so force also matters. Um, so all the weight of the spinner is pushing down on the bearings which pushes down on what's called the crown race or the bearing faces. And that in itself is a source of friction. So if you could just remove that weight, the only friction you would get would be perpendicular to the spindle. And in theory, it should have worked great. But um, what I quick, quickly realized is with the 3D printing, there are small inconsistencies and warping from the material. So there was a wobble and that wobble didn't make it very good and the bearing itself it, it wasn't the best either and I did all of the things uh, people online said to do clear out the bearings with the solvent don't lubricate it make sure that everything's clean I want to try um, I want to try ceramic bearings mm, but we'll see in the future um, my friend Dana said ceramic is better so maybe I'll keep testing this maybe not so today I decided to try another thing. 
if I couldn't eliminate inconsistencies um, from 3D printing, maybe I'll try um, finding a spinner that has a hole, the perfect shape. I was not able to do so. Like, the magnets are pretty big. These magnets have like four pounds times two of uh, pull force. So they're really, really ridiculously strong. But I saw this spinner and I was like, hmm, that little circle on the inside is the perfect size. All I have to do is just cut about half a centimeter of aluminum that appears to be hardened and anodized three times accurately. Um, I didn't know it would be so hard going into it, but oh my god, it wasn't easy. Um, and then you have to like trim the inside to fit the magnet and the bearing. Um, it took me forever, but oh, I just broke it. That that's great. Um, but um, it does illustrate the point better. So I just removed the metal and replaced it with a magnet, and I did it very carefully to make sure that it was accurate. It was really, really difficult to do it accurately. Um, let me see if I can find those pieces. It, it spins, but the concept and the physics is there, but I couldn't get it to work. It makes me so sad because I, I work pretty hard on these things. Uh, I'm gonna try to find it, make a video, and then uh, put it together. I actually found it, but it just broke cleanly broke. Which is another bummer. That sucks. I'm gonna try to assemble it, see if it works. Um, just for demonstrate demonstrative purposes. So, yeah, this is originally one piece. Um, but, the magnets themselves resist. Oh, it's not possible. The force is too strong. It makes sense because this was uh, fighting the force. So, unfortunately, it, the spinner broke. But you see how this will like just float and it resists the magnet because there's a magnet in there. I'm pushing it down, but it'll just float right back up. And that floating motion is what supported all the weight of the spinner. Ah, but it wasn't enough. Um, big bummer, but it was, it was fun at least. This was like the bottom of it, and there's like a little hole um, where it used to go. It was a nice clean break flat with the surface. But if I were to do this again, I would uh, change my 3D printer settings, do a more accurate print, and uh, maybe try better bearings. Uh, but yeah. Um, so projects are a little delayed. Last uh, weekend I spent um, the weekend in Philadelphia visiting family, which was fun, but I didn't get the boron treated GANs out. Um, so a progress report, uh, just a progress update. Um, Lupulka 1 is out now. The next is gonna be the Wutre M, the 4x4. So stickerless is about done. We're gonna start a batch of black and white and uh, Maybe expect that next week. Uh, so I guess uh, that's it for now, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Oh, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, I made this out of a nice color-changing material. Like, in certain wavelengths of light, like UV and outdoor weather, it changes to blue. And uh, this isn't editing, like, because I don't even know how to edit this. So basically, I shine the UV light, the electrons promote into triplet state, invoking phosphorescence. And that changes the structure of the molecules and the way light bounces off of them. And that's why this changes color in certain wavelengths of light. So when you're outdoors, it's blue. But when you're indoors, it's uh, this color. And you can see it slowly fade back down. Uh, I'm going to excite the electrons again with uh, 298 nanometer light, which is... Uh, all you need to change the color. It's just a simple triplet state electron promotion. Uh, you'll learn that in uh, in grad school. Yep. Uh, it's really cool how modern these materials are. It would have been so cool if this worked, but it didn't. Uh, but maybe I'll make more videos about failed projects.
just so uh, you can see what I do. Um, fun stuff.